Welcome back, y'all. We're looking at a crazy car again. Uh, we just looked at Brutus very recently. I'll have that linked at the end if you would like to check that out. It was, uh, well, to put it lightly, absolutely insane. And uh, this might be up there with it. I'm told by multiple people, honestly, over the past few months, on and off, but especially lately from that video, to look at uh, something called the Beast of Turin. Uh, it's a Fiat, I guess, but uh, not like the Fiats I'm thinking of that I'm used to seeing here in the U.S., which we only basically have like the Fiat 500. This is a whole different animal. So let's go ahead and take a look. This was suggested uh, most recently on Discord by uh, Tazzy Tiger, so I appreciate that. And we're going to be looking at a couple clips from a couple different videos. I'll have them linked down below, and uh, make sure to check them out. So, yeah, let's check out this first clip. <laughs> I, this is all I've seen is right here. <laughs> this thing looks absolutely crazy. I definitely get the vibe from Brutus, right? Now, this looks totally different, but I mean, they're both from the older era, right? And they're just these beastly machines that are, uh, well, quite frankly, there's no words for it. They don't really make sense, but uh, that's what makes them awesome. This is a 28.4 liter flamethrower engine. That's all I'm told in the title. 28 liters what the hell here i am thinking our you know trucks i've had were beast mode with uh you know 6.4 liter v8s <laughs> that's nothing compared to this what have we got going on here okay this thing is shooting flames on idle <laughs> Oh my god! What on earth? Oh my god, look at these shifting outside the car. Okay, now that's something you don't see every day. Even down to the shifter, he's, I think he's shifting, right? He, he was pulling in two different levers, which that's what makes me wonder what he is doing. But they're outside of the car, they're not in where he's sitting. Look at this. <laughs> can we, can we uh, assume it'd be fair to say that this thing probably shakes the earth? <laughs> oh my god. If the that um brutus if brutus was i said like a speeding bullet it literally looked like a bullet when it was going down the road right because it was really long and kind of slender um this is a slug <laughs> this is a slug from you know a shotgun look at this thing i mean it actually looks like one with the gold front and the red yeah see see the picture uh, yeah this thing is unbelievable That is loud, even through the headphones. Oh my God. I only have the volume on my computer turned to like 68% or something. This thing is insanely loud. <laughs> That's gotta be absolutely wild in person. Like one of those cars that drive by and you just feel it. You feel this thing. Holy smokes. Okay, you can tell that it's got speed in it, right? Um, I know they're not going like absolutely balls out because yikes, right? <laughs> I think they want to preserve it and they don't want to, you know hurt themselves <laughs> that would be like first priority um, but second of all you could tell they're like not going absolute crazy on it yet you could tell when they do give it throttle it's just it wants to go you can you could just tell when something has power and it's actually scooting by pretty fast there's more footage of it look at the flames jeez 
What freaking engine is this? I think it's like an engine frame. It's like an engine straight from hell, man. Holy crap. Look at that thing move when they rev it. The whole car is just like boom, boom, like, wow. That's got some torque. Oh my God. Are they driving that in rain on those tires? I'd be scared to drive that car in perfect daylight, perfect dry conditions on the grippiest track you can throw me on. Screw driving that in rain. Okay, this will be linked down below as well. We're going to be looking at how you start this thing. <laughs> I mean, this thing, may I say, as weird looking or polarizing looking as it is, just because obviously this doesn't look like anything not modern whatsoever. Uh, this thing is, what, like 100 years old or 80 years old or something? We'll, we'll look up with some stats after. Uh, and please feel free in the comments to share anything that we miss in this video. I mean, this thing is just fascinating. Obviously, it's very old, but I really, it's growing on me. Like, this thing looks cool. It, it, it's, it's so weird. I don't know what to say about this thing. That engine is massive. Like, look at it in size comparison to the guy standing in front of it. It's a grown man. And that engine is just bigger. Oh, don't tell me. Don't tell me this is a hand crank engine. Oh my God. You could not pay me to do that. <laughs> I've seen, or I've heard of stories and like, I think I've seen a video of like just regular, like a Ford model, what was it, like a Model T or Model A, one of the early just American cars that had hand cranks with like no horsepower compared to this thing. And they were dangerous, you know? Like if, if it cranked and then like um, kicked back, you know, it could be really, really like take out your arm type stuff, right? Oh, I do not envy this guy. How do you even turn this bad boy? That's what he's doing, right? It is a hand crank. <laughs> Start. Out is on, yeah. Start. Um, okay. yeah. You know old cars, you know it's going to be good when it's like one of those cars where it's like, oh, it's a, yeah, like a 15-step process, 10 minutes to get this thing started. You know it's a ton of fun. <laughs> That's involved. Okay. Hold on. Let me, let me not ruin this. Okay. Here we go. Ready? Yeah. That actually started right up. I'm kind of surprised. You guys will have to explain to me. This is way beyond my... Like, I always think, like, I'm a car guy. I always think, like, I know a lot about cars. And then you show me something like this. And quite frankly, being honest with you, I don't know a lot about the grand scope of cars. This, I don't even know how that how this works. <laughs> this is so different and old and just... Uh, a bizarre creation that started right up though i'm glad the guy didn't have to hand crank it and then have a fire up that just seemed way too scary with an engine that beastly you know <laughs> Okay, so I'm, there must be making some adjustments to God knows what. I mean, I'm assuming this is like 1 million percent. This is some sort of carbureted system on this, right? Uh, I don't, we're going to read about the engine after. I don't know how many cylinders we're working with or anything. Maybe this is like the gear shifter. Or maybe this is a throttle over here. I'm not, I'm not really sure.
Look at how you close the hood. You, you fold it down and you tighten up the belt like you're <laughs> tightening up the belt on your trousers. <laughs> oh, what a different experience this car is. This is one of those cars where uh, you throw me in here as a lifelong car guy and I wouldn't even know how to drive this thing. Literally wouldn't even know how. Okay, maybe the throttle is inside then. But still, this thing is, it's something else. All right, now this will be linked down below as well. Make sure to check them out. Thought I'd throw this in there. You didn't click off the video. You still have to say video. I thought I'd throw this in there. Uh, a little Beast of Turin versus Brutus. Uh, now, of course, we just saw a video on Brutus, learning about it and uh, seeing it go down the road. And it was just, like I said, absolutely a wild. This thing is actually a beast as well. Seeing these back to back is really fun and just fascinating for me because I didn't even know these cars existed. I've never seen anything like them before. And uh, I'm really glad I'm discovering them. They're, they're really fun. It's a good way to wake up in the morning. So yeah, let's see a startup procedure on Brutus right back to back like we just saw on the Beast of Turin. And let's see how they compare for fun. God, that thing is so cool, too. I love the guys just talking German. You just hear German, and then you see this thing, and it's like, okay, here we go. Ooh, first try. Whoa, whoa. Oh my God. <laughs> oh, jeez. That is so badass. That is so badass, dude. Holy smokes. Okay. Wow. What is going on? This is super fun. See these back to back. Okay. We're going to do more on the Beast of Terrain in just a second. Because I got to learn a little bit about that thing. Uh, it, seeing them... Running, I'd say they're both equal. They're both amazing, right? Now, if we're going purely on the the engine start, right? The ignition procedure, the sound, the buildup, right? I actually got to hand this to the Brutus. This thing is, that was fun. That was really fun to watch. Hearing that, nee, 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 right? And like, finally, it just roared to life. You saw, the, you saw the smoke start appearing. You saw it come to life. It was a slow buildup, and then it, boom, it fired up. You could, I could almost feel the earth shake from here. <laughs> uh, that's just like the, the style I prefer. That was pretty fun. Now, on the flip side, the Beast of Turin obviously was a whole procedure as well. But when it came to cranking, uh, it that actually fired up way faster, like boom, like this. And it was obviously sounds amazing as well. Now, idol is really wild on the Beast of Turin because that thing is straight up shooting flames on idol. It's just like a monster. I'm wondering like how you even work on these things. Like how many quarts of oil do these things take, right? <laughs> like this is just a whole nother level of uh, like mechanical automotive. Well, in this case, aviation, like this is, these, this is a aviation motor. It's not even like a car engine, you know, it, it, this is just beyond me. It's like beyond my scope of knowledge for, for automotive. It's so cool in the most wild, unhinged way. These cars are ridiculous, and I mean that in the absolute best way. Okay, so if we hop over to uh, the good old Wikipedia, uh, it says the Fiat S76, later known as the Fiat 300 horsepower record and nicknamed the Beast of Turin, was a car built in 1910. 
1910. Okay, I, th- I was thinking this was from the 20s or the 30s. 1910. That is 114 years ago. Is that hard to believe or what? Wow. By the Italian company Fiat, specifically to beat the land record held in those years by the Blitzen Benz. <gasps> Blitzen Benz. That's a cool name. There's next episode. <laughs> I'm going to have to look that up as well. Uh, let's see. It's 28,353 cc engine displacement delivered 290 horsepower. Now, 290 horsepower by nowadays standards doesn't sound like a lot, but you got to keep in mind, first of all, this engine with, you know, only 290 horsepower uh, will feel ridiculously more powerful than any modern engine with 290 horsepower. So it's it's not even comparable, right? Not to mention, just saying the, the number 28,000 cc's doesn't sound right. That sounds like someone made a miscalculation. That's how ridiculous this vehicle is. It's it's unreal. Only two of these were built. I, I actually thought there would have been only been one. So that's cool that there's two of these. I wonder where both are. I hope both are survived cars, right? Uh, obviously we saw one of them running, you know, in these videos. So that's good that at least there's one out there. I hope both of them are out there. Well, I just answered my own question by looking right in the, uh, info card here. It says production 1910 to build. One of them was dismantled by Fiat. What is that about? Anyway, this thing was a four cylinder engine. No way. This, this freaking beast of Turin I've been hearing is a four cylinder. That's even more crazy. So it's a 28 liter engine with a four, and it's only a four cylinder. That means each cylinder has like seven liters of capacity. How big are these pistons in this thing? <laughs> uh, it made its 290 horsepower at 1400 RPM. No surprise. That is like, by the way, extremely low RPM. You know, most cars are going to make their peak horsepower at, uh, for gas engines, maybe between, you know, 4,500 and... 7,000 RPM, depending on how high they rev, right? 1,400 RPM, that's insane. That's like what idle is when it's cold. Uh, continuing on, four valves, three valves in the airship engine, starting with trembler coil, two spark plugs per cylinder, three spark plugs in the airship engine, ignition with high-voltage magneto Bosch-type DR4-4, water cooling, transmission with chain drive, axle suspension rigid with front and rear leaf springs, rear longitudinal struts, and four-speed gearbox plus reverse gear. The radiator design of this prototype for records was reused by Fiat for subsequent road models. Wow, that's a uh, mouthful of uh, the drivetrain, but there it is. <laughs> As for dissecting some of that, yeah. It's over my head. This thing is just insane. Anyway, I won't read through all this. I'm going to read it on my own for sure. But basically, this thing is absolutely crazy. And, uh, it and you know, it's a land speed car. So land speed cars are just wild. The fact that they were doing this kind of thing back in the 1910s <laughs> is frightening. Like, wow, they must have been hella brave. And what a crazy time that they were even trying this, these kinds of things. But I suppose, like... Cars were new back then, right? Like the whole idea of them were new. So it, was, it probably was an exciting time to be around the automotive scene because it was just this new horizon that no one knew about. And people never got to drive cars for hundreds and thousands of years. And then boom, now we have cars. Let's have fun with them. Anyway, in closing, long story short, it did basically set a record, 132 miles per hour, which and that thing sounds frightening, and of course for the time was really, really fast. Uh, but it wasn't like official, official because it didn't make a re- like it didn't complete a run within the time limit. They had to do like a run and then a return run or something, and it didn't really do it within the time. But in my book, yeah, this thing was capable of setting records. Uh, it basically did. Uh, interestingly enough, the second example that was dismantled and missing or whatever. Uh, after the First World War, it was dismantled by Fiat, and then the S76 ended up in Australia, of all places, where it was rebuilt and repowered with a Stutz engine. Uh, but it later crashed at Armadale in the early 1920s while practicing for a race to the coast. So that the second car had a weird uh, history going on. But uh, I think that's going to do it for this one. That was thrilling. Absolutely thrilling. Get one last look at this thing. 
<laughs> uh, what a absolute beast. A proper name, Beast of Turin. Uh, what an experience. I can't imagine what these sound like in person. I can't imagine what these are like to work on, to drive, to just feel, right? I, I mean, it's just a wild vehicle and kind of a fun segment to explore. You know, I've ex- you know, it, totally enjoy exploring vehicles from around the world that I didn't grow up with, that I'm not familiar with, that we don't have in the States, you know, whatever the story is. But these are just fascinating because even U.S. vehicles, like I don't really know about vehicles from 100 years ago. So this is a whole new world that's really exciting when we're talking about iconic, you know, just over-the-top cars like this, for example. So, yeah, I, I really like this. That is the Fiat that is like no Fiat I've ever seen. <laughs> and uh, I really appreciate the suggestions. These are kicking ass, and I think they're really fun. So you'll definitely have to tell me uh, in the comments, you know, any stories you've had about this car, whether you've gotten to see this thing in person at a car show, a demonstration, whatever. I would love to hear about it. And uh, maybe you can tell me, even though I think they're both awesome, if you want to, you know, have a little fun down there, tell me what you like better or what you think is the better car out of Brutus and the Beast of Turin. They're, they're different, right? They're not, of course, the same thing, but I, I, I'm looping them in the same genre of just out there wild cars that are uh, nothing like a modern boring car that we all drive on the road today. If you use your imagination a little bit, you know, which car do you like better? But yeah, I think that's going to do it for this one, guys. Let me know if uh, looking into that Blitzen Benz is worth it. I think we might have to do that for the next episode. But that's all I got. My name is Ian. You're watching IW Rocker. And until next time, y'all, stay safe out there. I'll catch you later.